All right, everyone. Today we're going to talk about integer exponents. And I think it's very intuitive how this all came to be. It all comes back to the basic fraction of a number over another number. So, 5 divided by 5. Everyone know what the answer is? Hopefully you all realize this is what's known as a fancy form of 1. The 5 and the 5 simplify to 1. So how can that help us solve integer exponents? Well, we learned with division of exponents that if we want to divide, all we have to do is write out the problem. And then we get a certain number of problems that simplify. So notice, 3 of the 5 simplify, which leaves us 2 5's left over where? In the numerator. And that's why 5 to the 5th divided by 5 to the 3rd ends up to being 5 to the 2nd, or 25. And we learned that 5 minus 3 is 2, and that's why it works. So let's take this one step further. What if I had 5 to the 5th over 5 to the 4th? Notice, now there are four 5's in the numerator and denominator that would simplify. Boom. And I hope you realize that there is one 5 left over right here in the numerator. And I also hope you realize that 5 minus 4 is 1. Now if we take it one step further, add another 5 to the denominator. Now we have all 5's in the numerator, all 5's in the denominator, and everything simplifies. And so what that means is that I have no 5's left over, and everything simplified to 1. And it all goes back to here. Same numerator, same denominator, equals 1. Same numerator, same denominator, equals 1. And 5 minus 5 is 0. And that's why you'll find that any zero exponent always equals 1. Let's take it one step further. What if I had six fives in the denominator? Well, now when I simplify, I hope you guys notice, where's the 5 left over? It's left over in the denominator. So when I subtract these numbers, 5 minus 6, or 5 plus negative 6, I end up getting 5 to the negative first power which means that my 5 was left over in the denominator. My negative exponent tells me that where the 5 is located. That's all it's doing. 5 to the first power means the 5 was left over in the numerator. 5 to the negative first power means the 5 was left over in the denominator. Let's see it one more time. Add another set of 5s. And once again, when we simplify, we end up getting two fives left over where? In the denominator. So this is five to the negative second power because five plus negative seven or five minus seven is negative two. Where are those two fives located? We know we have the base numbers five. We know we have two of them. Where are they located? That negative sign tells you they're located in the denominator. And so that's the rule. Positive exponents mean that more numbers were left over in the numerator. Negative exponents mean that more base numbers were left over in the denominator. And a zero exponent means that the numerator and the denominators were equal. Therefore, the answer is always, always one. Definitely write this down. These are the rules. And if you get them straight in your head, oh, this is going to be the easiest chapter ever. So, 6 to the negative second power means my base number is 6. Where are my 6's left over? In the denominator. And so I get my answer. x to the negative fourth. Where are my, ver my base number is an x. Where are my base numbers left over? In the denominator. And you're done. See if you guys can handle this one. The negative 3's were left over in the denominator. That meant 3 negative 3's were left over in the denominator. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 27. And 19 to the 0 power? Well, that's a trick question. Answer is 1. Anything to the 0 power is always, always 1. Let's give this one a shot. Notice, I have the exact same base number, so I subtract my exponents, I end up getting 
negative 3 to the negative 1, so my base number is a negative 3, where is that negative 3 located? In the denominator. Let's try this one. Imagine I have six twos up here, I have eight twos down here. How many twos will be left over and where? So I subtract. I get two to the negative second power. My base number is two. And where will it be located? In the denominator. Two times two is four. So I'm hoping what you guys are noticing is that the rules are very simple. However, they are a little intricate and you do have to pay attention. Lots of chances to make mistakes here. So here's where I like to say the exponent only affects what it touches. The negative exponent's only touching the x. It's not touching the 8. And so only the x's are in the denominator. In this situation, when we're multiplying, we have the same base number, so we add the exponents. I end up getting b to the negative tenth. b is my base number. I have negative 10 of them, so where were they left over? They were left over in the denominator. All right, the exponent only affects what it touches. And so, the negative 3 only is touching the y, so only the y's are negative. Remember what we're doing here, though. I have variables being divided. My y's have the same base, so I subtract the exponents. Negative 3 minus 5 or plus negative 5. I get y to the negative 8. The exponent only affects what it touches, so only the y's belong in the denominator. All right. So in this situation, notice I subtract my exponents. 6 minus 9 or 6 plus negative 9, which gets me x to the negative third. Where are those x's left over? In the denominator. And the 15 was already in the denominator, so it stays. All right, if you guys got questions on this, you will make mistakes, I promise you. Don't be afraid to ask your teachers, don't be afraid to ask your parents, and good luck. We'll call it that.